My name is Alex Dorsey, and this is my home. I've been sailing upon her for over 30 years now. I've crossed oceans alone searching for something, and I finally found it. I've lived in and experienced more than 20 countries, and I've immersed myself in all of them. But I feel this is the hour to share my feelings, thoughts, and ideas. It's time we navigate the bigger questions in life, as we've never needed direction and hope more than we do now. We are 7.9 billion people, and we've made grave mistakes. We've also made epic accomplishments, which is part of being human. But life has become a bit too fast, disconnected, and complicated, and the decisions we make have never been more important than they are now. Our health, the power we consume, the way in which we communicate and interact with each other, the way we shop, and the way we raise our children. What is it, you ask, that I found? Well, if there's one thing I've learned, it's that we're only here to experience love. Please join my wife and I as we sail the world searching for the good stuff. It's just time to slow down, roll up our sleeves, and get to work rebuilding a world that we want to live in. Let's find our way together. Thank you. Hi guys, I'm Alex Dorsey and welcome to Project Blue Sphere. Some of you might remember me from the last 20 years of posting online travel videos, sale blogs, and writing for magazines. Um, I know this is going to make me sound really old. <laughs> I was actually posting online videos years before YouTube was around, Facebook, or even Gmail. I just turned 56. Um, my wife and I are now producing what we're considering to be Project Blue Sphere 2.0. And in 2.0, we're going to be, the core of the show is still a sailing and traveling show, but we're going to be addressing some of the bigger questions that everybody's got on their minds right now, you know, from health to, to you know, politics. I don't want to get so much into that, but, you know, um, electronic vehicles. My wife and I live almost 100% carbon free. And um, a lot of people are, they're always asking us, you know, how do you do this? How do you do, how do, you do laundry, you know? And it's all doable. Um, and it's actually pretty simple once you get your head around it. And we want to provide some of that information. Um, also, we're doing kind of a reverse travel show. I turned 56 a little while ago and my wife asked me what I wanted for my birthday. And the answer kind of came out of left field. I wasn't expecting it, but I told her I wanted to go home. And going back to the States is exactly what my friends are telling me not to do right now. Uh, they're saying, no, everybody's so polarized. There's so many problems. And, you know, I just can't believe that. You know, I know I've been gone for 20 years and things have changed, but, you know, Republicans and Democrats are two sides of the same coin. We're the yin and yang of American democracy. We are America and we need to support each other. And I, I, I think this is a phase, it's not gonna last long and we're all gonna get back together. I also wanna show the beautiful things about America right now. And I know they're hard to see. Um, from my perspective, they're not hard to see at all. I wanna show my wife where I grew up. I wanna show her the Channel Islands in Southern California where I fell in love with sailing. I wanna go up to Alaska and fish salmon and hunt. I have about another 10 years left, and I think I won't be able to handle the boat anymore. I'll be too old. So we're looking also for a place to retire. My wife has Argentine and Croatian passports, so we can live anywhere in Argentina, which I'm sure would be Patagonia. Uh, we can live anywhere in Europe. We can live anywhere in Panama, as we have residency here now, and we can live anywhere in the United States, which is kind of my first choice, and I want to go explore that. So um, the plan is we're going to be leaving here in Panama for a 45 or 4,800 mile passage. We're expected, expecting to be at sea for a few months. Uh, we're taking the long route offshore about halfway to Hawaii and then we're going to catch the Pacific High and sail north to San Diego. Um, so that's going to be pretty interesting and I'd love to take you guys along for that. 
It's the longest trip that I've ever done at sea. The, long, the other long passage I did was actually from the same anchorage to the Galapagos, which was like two weeks, and then from the Galapagos to the Marquesas Islands in French Polynesia, which was about a month. Actually, it was exactly a month. It was 30 days. So that should be pretty interesting in the show. But uh, I just wanted to introduce us. My wife is behind the camera always, Carla. And um, welcome. We're going to go now to the San Blas Islands in Panama and start the show. Cheers. Our story starts in the San Blas Islands of Panama. We came here during the pandemic to escape the lockdowns. I lost a sailing friend to COVID right at the beginning of the pandemic and wanted a safe place where Carl and I could isolate in peace. Before we left the mainland, I bought enough tea, rice, beans, nuts, and other staple items to last a couple of years. We produce all of our own power with our solar array and fresh water with our spectral water maker. Our hard bimini is also great for collecting large amounts of rainwater. We can stay isolated for extended periods of time and live quite comfortably. My wife has been a vegetarian much of her life and I was the polar opposite. I grew up eating meat with every single meal. A few years ago, I made a conscious effort to become a vegetarian, but I couldn't do it and felt I was getting sick. What I did accomplish is reducing my animal protein intake to only six to eight portions a month. Carl and I have been together for a decade now, and during that time, we've seen a dramatic decrease in marine life. On my home reef in Linton, we noticed about a 70% reduction in fish, and about as much of the reef has died. The reef is my church, my temple, and where I feel closest to the universe. I'm not a religious man, but I find my spirituality here. When I hunt for food, I kill as responsibly as possible. I usually take the lionfish, who are not native to the area and terribly invasive. They do make great fish tacos, by the way. As I film the new project Blue Sphere, I realize that it's not really a sailing show anymore. It's a space that I hope will inspire others in their own personal journeys finding health, sustainability, and a peaceful place in the world. Our practices and lifestyle can easily be adopted to life in a house, apartment, or RV. I didn't find any fish that I felt comfortable taking from the reef today, but it is one of my favorite days of the week. It's bread day. Hey everyone, it's Carla. I'm quite shy, so I feel much more comfortable behind the camera but I wanted to say hi and talk a little bit about food. Alex and I both love cooking and living on a boat makes it easier to eat healthy because we're usually away from urban centers. We prefer secluded, uninhabited destinations. The moment I visit family or friends, I realize how convenient it is to order takeout or to buy individually packaged or processed foods. I get lazy to cook, but even if it's a great restaurant, your meal will never be prepared with the love that you can put into it. It is so important to take the time to cook for yourself and your loved ones. Always make time to cook. We buy in bulk whenever we can. You save money and there's a lot less waste. We always choose paper, glass or metal packaging over plastic. And if we have to buy plastic containers, we always reuse them for something else. There's this Parmesan cheese we love, and as you can see, I reused the containers for my bread ingredients. I also cut one in half and it became a dog's water bowl, and I make balers for the dinghy. Reducing is the key component of our purchasing philosophy. If you're interested in this easy and quick bread recipe, I'll make a video and post it on projectblosphere.com. Maintaining and living aboard a boat takes an enormous amount of work. In order to do a simple load of laundry, we need to generate and store the power we need, as well as making the fresh water itself. We have a number of complicated systems that need constant maintenance, but the upside is we live mostly carbon-free and we don't have any monthly bills. Designing and building a lithium iron phosphate battery bank was one of the best additions I've made, and we'll talk about that a lot more in depth at a later time. Carla and I enjoy being self-sufficient and doing everything ourselves. We also really enjoy what we have and find a way to bring love into all of our daily projects. 
The ultimate goal, however, is peace, autonomy, and enjoying our lives to the fullest. I love rowing to the beach for a walk. It's also good exercise, as well as carbon-free transportation. We do have a small gas outboard for long trips, but I'll be upgrading to electric as soon as we can. We do have two other family members aboard Eleanor. They're both rescues and lovely beasts. My sister found Nacho bloody and worn in a garbage can in Atlanta. He was just a puppy. We believe he was a bait dog for fighting dogs. He's the black one. Chewy, the white one, was abandoned here on a small island in the San Blas with no food or water source. When we got him, he was very malnourished and skittish. He was obviously severely abused. The good news is we've all found each other and we're as happy as hermit crabs. We love nature. We've had a few black tip reef sharks hanging around the boat for a few days, and they've been a lot of fun to swim with and watch. Most of my life I've been a filmmaker, but there were a few years after I left the industry where I was a stockbroker and financial advisor. I'll never forget the epiphic moment I had at my firm's Christmas party, where I realized I didn't want to commit my life to the accumulation of wealth. I was 36 and wanted to use my youth for traveling and experiencing the world for every drop of life it could offer me. I quit the following week and started my journey. When I was sailing across the Pacific, I learned the true value of time and money. My pockets were empty, but my time was priceless. Time is the only real commodity we own. It is precious, valuable, and should be traded wisely. Hi guys, so speaking about money, Carla and I just got an email to go do a small video job for a sea cucumber farm. I don't know much about sea cucumbers, but supposedly they're uh, important in rebuilding the reef system, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, that's something that's really important to me. So uh, we're about to head back to Linton now to do that job. And I also want to say, during the course of the show moving forward, it's very important for me to highlight people that are doing the right thing and um, companies that are doing the right thing. And I believe this is one of them, but let's go see what Panacea is all about. What if business could be done in a way that protects our most important natural resources? What if restoring the environment was just as important as turning a profit? What if we could transform unemployed fishing communities into sustainable farmers? Well, guess what? We're doing just that. Hey, I'm Dave Grossman from Panacea Aquaculture. We have a sustainable sea cucumber farm right here in Panama. Why are sea cucumbers important, you may ask? Sea cucumbers have been a delicacy in China since the Ming Dynasty. They've been around a long time. Why do people in China and other Asian countries love sea cucumbers? Well, they're a superfood. They're really great for you. They're good for joint pain. They're low in calories and fat and high in protein. They contain antioxidants, are an excellent source of calcium, magnesium, iron, and zinc. But the most important thing is that they're really good for you, and it is the most inexpensive protein source that we can grow other than crickets. So that's what brings us here to Panacea Aquaculture in Panama. We're growing sea cucumbers to offer a sustainable product to the unbridled growth of Chinese demand. The sea cucumbers are like the earthworms of the sea, as nutrition and sediment and fish poop filters down to the sea bottom. Sea cucumbers eat all that dirty sand, and what comes out the other side is clean sand with calcium carbonate and ammonia, which are the building blocks for coral reefs. As a result, sea cucumbers actually help buffer against ocean acidification. So with increasing incidence of coral reef bleaching all around the world, we need to get these sea cucumbers back into the water. That's where we come in. Because of the rising demand in China over the last 30 years, sea cucumbers have been overfished all around the world. Billions and billions of sea cucumbers have been taken out of the water and there's been nobody cultivating sea cucumbers to repopulating them. So we're working in an area that has already been overfished of sea cucumbers. There's very few sea cucumbers in the water in this area. 
When we put a juvenile sea cucumber or seed it into the area, um, that's bringing this life back to the ecosystem. And that is there to stay because once we take out a portion of these to be processed, they're always replaced with another juvenile sea cucumber. So we are actively repopulating the region. We're also having peripheral and secondary repopulation because many of the adults that we have in the water are gonna be releasing sperm and egg and reproducing naturally as well. So there's gonna be a lot of sea cucumbers being repopulated through our efforts. Compared to other forms of aquaculture, sea cucumber farming is actually very non-intensive in terms of the resources that we need. We don't have to feed them anything other than algae. Algae is created in our hatchery just using the power of the sun. And once they're in the water, in the marine environment, we don't have to feed them anything. We're a triple bottom line business, which means that yes, while we are technically for profit, creating real impact in the communities where we work and in the marine ecosystem we work are just as important. These are coastal fishing communities and with the decline of the coral reefs and the fisheries, there's many people who are out of work here. So we're taking this opportunity not to teach a man or a woman to fish, but to teach a man or a woman to farm. We're here to show that sustainable business is not just possible, but that it's really fun too. And if you're interested to come and check us out, we're always interested in collaborations. Come on down and join the fun and help us save the world together. So I have to say, I am incredibly impressed with Panacea and David Grossman and everything that, that they're doing. Uh, David's actually become a good friend of mine and inspired me to make this show. You know, um, we can do the right thing and I wanna do the right thing. I wanna, I wanna inspire people to, you know, I believe in the butterfly effect. I believe that there are small things that we can do, like changing the way we shave to plastic-free shaving with a, with a safety razor, um, that make huge impacts on the world. You know, we think of, oh yeah, it's just a little piece of plastic I put on the head of my, you know, thing to shave every day, but it's really not a little piece of plastic. It's a lifetime of little pieces of plastic that go into the sea that turn into microplastics and kill our environment. So something as simple as changing the way we shave is huge. And uh, that's something that we're gonna do now because I've been shaving with a safety razor for a few years now, and I wanna show you how it's done. Okay guys, so as you can see, I really need a shave. Um, I do something a bit odd. After I use my razor for the first time, I keep it um, soaked in olive oil so uh, it doesn't corrode and I can keep a much sharper edge on it. And I get four or five shaves out of it every time. And something else today that's going on is I don't have any more bar soap to shave. So um, I'm using a combination of dish detergent and um, Uh, what do you call it? Uh, body lotion, body moisturizer. But one thing I want to say before we get right off the bat, let me open this back up. When I'm done with my razor, this is all that goes into the environment. It's about as thin as a hair. It's a piece of metal. There's no plastic. And that's the magic of it all. <clears throat> Um, when you do start shaving this way, dial it down to one or two, because you really have to know your face and which way the grain goes, so you go with the grain. But you do get a wonderful, wonderful close shave. I know some people are afraid of it, and you may in the beginning, you know, get a little razor burn, or you might cut yourself. Don't go sideways, obviously. But it's just such a... You know, it's such a small thing that we can do for the world and um, really make an impact. My grandfather taught me how to shave when I was pretty young. I think I was like 14 years old. And, um, you know, thinking back, I actually remember 
when I changed to a triple blade plastic blah 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 whatever you call them and I remember thinking yeah it's easier it's cooler I guess because you know you see the ads on TV and everything and um, but I remember thinking man my shape is not as good and now I get that absolutely wonderful shave again. And I also have to say, you save a lot of money. Blades are cheap. You know, there's, there's absolutely no reason in the world to buy disposable razor blades or razor heads, whatever you call those things. Um, it's just a, you know, and it's not even about saving the world. It's just get a better shave. You know, there's, I don't see any um, downfall about shaving this way whatsoever. Ta-da! Anyway, guys, I'll see you later. Cheers. Beautiful sunny day today. I know that was a really long uh, shaving video, and I apologize for that. But I really wanted to show people that uh, it's possible to shave with a safety razor um, and not come out of the process looking like you just got out of a cat fight. It takes a gentle hand on the skin, some patience, and if you figure it out, you're gonna save money, uh, you're gonna get a better shave, and you're gonna do something really wonderful for the world, which is cutting down on um, you know, single-use plastics. Uh, we sell those razors at projectbluesphere.com don't feel compelled to buy one from us. It would be nice, but I would rather see you go into your attic and see if you could dig out your uh, grandfather's old razor or maybe buy one on eBay. You know, I want to say that I get it. You know, the world is really, really loud right now. We're not supposed to eat beef. We're not supposed to eat dairy. We're not supposed to drive our cars. We're not supposed to, you know, buy plastic stuff. And I get it, it's all loud and confusing and you know we shouldn't feel guilty about every single thing that we do, but we should be making the right decisions and making those decisions is something I hope we can navigate here on Project Blue Sphere. Um, today it's you know changing the way we shave, tomorrow it's going to be you know um, changing the way we buy water or different ways about who we support and the way we shop. So I hope we can all navigate that together. If you would like to participate in Project Blue Sphere, please visit our Patreon page. I believe it's up here in the banner in YouTube above my head or on the side. Um, on our Patreon page, you'll find blogs, uh, behind the scenes videos, extra videos, live Q and A's. Where I'm gonna be producing a lot of educational content for those who wanna go cruising or to get a boat. I'm not trying to steal anyone's thunder, but there's, a lot of bad and marginal advice. Um, it seems everybody who buys a boat is, you know, giving advice their first year on how to anchor, how to do this and how to do that. I think I can bring a lot of experience to the table. And uh, that's something else we're gonna offer at projectbluesphere.com. The other thing that I wanna say that we're really excited about is our videos, our films are produced 100% with green power. These beautiful panels right here these panels, we have four of them, they power our lives. We, do, we make water from salt water with these panels. We read by light produced by these panels. We do our laundry you know, with these panels. Our batteries for our cameras are charged with these panels. Our editing system is charged with these panels. And we upload to YouTube with power that comes from these panels. So we're really excited about that. Um, in our next episode, we're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna leave Linton Bay Panama, which has been my home for about 10 years now. We're gonna to sail to Shelter Bay Marina. We're gonna haul Eleanor out. We're gonna do a bottom job, some other work, and prepare to transit the Panama Canal. And we're gonna transit the Panama Canal, which is a two-day process, and come to Panama City, which is where I am now. Um, we're also gonna be checking out some electric scooters, because Carla and I wanna have some carbon-free transportation so we can get around and do shopping and not take taxis. Also, those scooters will be charged with these panels, which is very cool. And um, that's about it for this episode. Please like, subscribe, and share. Um, Sharing is really important because we really do want to get our message out to as many people as possible. And um, thank you so much for watching today. Cheers. <laughs>